and welcome to the Hyberflow. This manifold is a huge improvement over what you've been used to. Uh, the main benefits of this manifold uh, are they give you more precise flow control, so you uh, will have more lot-to-lot -lot reproducibility or batch-to-batch -batch reproducibility, and hopefully fewer re-extracts because you have more control over your flow rate. Also, it's a much shorter learning curve for your technicians. So with just a, a small amount of instruction, uh, they can be up and running on this in no time. The entire pathway in this unit is inert, so you don't have to worry about anything breaking down, no leaching. Uh, very simple to use. Let me show you some of the, the features on the unit. We can uh, both elute with our selector knob, or we can send product to waste. So we can do two different things at one time on each station. Uh, we can shunt the uh, waste wherever we want to go or, or the, the liquid wherever we want it to go. We can uh, go to organic waste or we can go to aqueous waste and uh, that way we're separating your waste flow path. So we're not getting your organics mixed in with your aqueous. Down here we have very fine flow control. So we can have fine flow control of your vacuum pressure uh, for your elution and also for your waste. Now let me show you uh, how this works. We use a regular universal cartridge like you've been using. Regular bottle holder. Uh, we have the bottle holders again for the Boston rounds. And we have the bottle holders with the threads for the peanut butter jars. The way this works is uh, first we're going to condition the cartridge like we normally would. Then we're going to equilibrate the cartridge and then add the sample, dry using the vacuum, and dilute. Then we use it just like we would a regular manifold. We have our cartridges already in place. We add uh, our conditioning solvent, uh, in this case methanol. Carefully measure in you know, the right amount that it says in your method. As you can see here, it's really critical that you measure and get the correct amount of methanol in there. And basically, uh, you want to cover cover the top thread. Uh, what this does is it allows the water to flow through the uh, the C18 uh, sorbent that we have in there more easily. Otherwise, it would be repelled and it wouldn't go through the pores. So that's all the methanol does. Once the methanol is finished doing its thing, then we're going to send some of that to waste. So we're going to turn this to organic. We're going to turn on our, our waste vacuum, which you can hear running in the background, the vacuum. And this is going to send our organic waste to this container. So all we do is go waste until the methanol is right where we want it. Then we stop. So I'm turning the knob to low just to give it a little bit of flow and get the methanol out. Now we're going to equilibrate with some water. Carefully measure the amount of water you're adding, of course. No, not really. You just need to make sure you're washing the methanol up because if you add your sample on top of methanol, the methanol will take some of your analytes to waste. And then we're going to send this to aqueous waste. So I'm going to turn the selector up to aqueous, turn to low to get some of the water out. You just don't want it to go completely dry, and unless you're living in the desert, that's not going to happen. So don't worry too much about the product going, the sorbent going dry, because it, it won't. If it does go dry, you just repeat the methanol and water steps. Now we can add the samples. And we would do that just like we would with a normal six station manifold. So here we've got some samples made. Let's turn it over, put it on top. Now that I have my samples on, I'm just going to turn on my, my waste knob again to make sure it's at about a half turn. And then I'm going to set my flow rate to low or until I start seeing some bubbles. And that should be a, a good rate for most extractions. 
but as you can see, there's very little training involved in turning this on. It uses just the regular pump that we are, always use, so you can hear it in the background. And this is going to our, uh, our, car, our carboy trap uh, that you can purchase from us, or any trap that you have, really. And uh, again, it's going to go to, to uh, aqueous. Now, as the sample loads on the cartridge, of course, the cartridge is going to slow down. So then you can just increase your flow rate to include, uh, increasing your vacuum pressure increases your flow rate and you'll still maintain a pretty good rate of, of sample loading. Again, you have fine adjustments over here. So here's our waste. We're sending the sample to waste. So I can open up the vacuum fully over here or slow it down, whichever I need to do by turning this knob. And this is your fine adjustment, and then here's, this is basically uh, your main adjustment here. Good thing about this, I mentioned earlier, is if, you, if this sample's done and you're ready to elute, you can elute this while this one is still loaded. So you're not stuck in, in one thing or another. Okay, now the sample's gone through and we're pulling vacuum for about 10 minutes to uh, get the sorbent as dry as possible before elution. So what we want to do first is turn our, our valves to off so we're no longer pulling to waste. And we're going to do our first elution. Always uh, do your first elution in uh, the bottle in case anything's stuck to the glass. So just rinse around there really good with your first aliquot, or you can just measure 10 mils and throw it in there, whatever your method calls for. And of course, get a good sheeting action going to get it off the glassware, and then just put it on top and go down the line. to soak for a few minutes because we want to have a good interaction between your solvent and the sorbent so that we're extracting all of your analytes out of the sorbent. So the longer they're in contact, the better. Now this has been soaking for about five minutes and we want to elute into our 40 mil vials. So we come back over to our, our valve again. This one I have uh, your elution flow. I'm just going to have maybe a half turn and then I'm going to turn this to low or until I start seeing a drip into the boa vial. So you just want to have it a loop drip by drip. Again, it gives you more residence time of the solvent with the C18 so that everything elutes. And then we just repeat. actually turn these off if you're concerned about recoveries and again let it soak for a while. I know the C18 we use in our oil and grease uh, cartridges is, is very powerful and so with that soaking it's really necessary. Not so much with our other C18s our DVDs. So we'll let it soak. We're going to open it up and collect. Not too fast. About like that. If you want, you can mark these for your technician 
mark, mark your valves so that they know where to turn them. Make it really easy. On the third one, third illusion, what I like to do is rinse out the bottle holder with my solvent. And here, you know, again, I'm using about 10 milliliters of solvent. Let that soak. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this is a tray here. So we'll catch any spills you might have. And we all know that I spill a lot, so it's very handy. So again, we're going to let that soak a little while. And then collect. The great thing about this is, is once you turn this to off, it stops dripping. It's not like a, a regular vacuum manifold where you still have to relieve the pressure. This actually shuts off the pressure completely, immediately, and it stops dripping. So if you want to stop here, it stops. Now, these just come off and they're ready for sodium sulfate and evaporation to dryness. And that's it. If you have any questions, just give us a call or send us an email. We're, we're always happy to help. Thank you.